I will start with a few words uh, on um, uh, on uh, Mr. Patavasi Taramaya, Dr. Patavasi Taramaya. Not much that can be added to what has been said, but I'll move on to uh, asking a few questions. I always believe that I have now the luxury of asking questions and not providing answers. Because if you have an official position, you have to answer. If you don't have an official position and if you are an academic, you have the luxury of questioning everybody and everybody else. First, are we in a post-crisis world or we are still in a crisis? Second, how much rebalancing of the factors that led to the crisis has already happened? Three, what are the prospects for growth and particularly the industries and the bankers here are naturally interested in that. What are the uncertainties uh, that the policymakers and financial market participants or all market participants need to face in the near future? And briefly, very briefly, uh, with my limited uh, understanding, what are the uh, opportunities for business in the global economy uh, at the current stage? First, as far as Dr. Patav Sidharamagaru is concerned, uh, it's, it's, everything has been said, but what I would like to do is briefly mention what I believe are the lessons that we have to learn from his life and his work. First, you see, his, 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 his great qualities of scholarship, entrepreneurship, leadership, all combined, one. He had to educate himself virtually. He was a very poor person. Most of the time, he was educated through scholarships. And in those days, incidentally, I know a friend of mine who is from Krishna district, studied in Andhra University with a scholarship from Anantapur district board. So in these days of regional feeling, who should understand this? And this happened in 1950-51. So this is the type of uh, approach the public policy and the, uh, and the institution had people. Good, capable people will be encouraged and that's what happened to Dr. Patav Secondly, when he went to college studies, uh, he went to Nobel College and uh, Madras Christian College and he got scholarships. So there's no religious uh, uh, issue. The scholarship is given by whatever the religious uh, third and that's what made him what he is. And then he becomes uh, president of the All India Congress Committee. Now we have the another situation is that he 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 people wanted him to become a B did his FA B and then went on to become a medical doctor because he passionately believed in being a medical doctor. And uh, of course in those days fortunately we didn't have uh, M set type of serious problems, but he would have easily cleared on the top even if it was there. But the most important is with all this he was very unique in founding educational institutions, bank. Insurance, name it, quite a variety of fields. He was a freedom fighter, he was in jail, he was, I don't know how he could find time. So maybe he had a lot of dupes who were, uh, <laughs> who were handling these things on his behalf. Uh, so I think I, I would simply say that at the end of it all, he never sought either to build wealth for himself or his family, nor even position. Finally, he had to be persuaded to become uh, a governor. And at the end of it, while he, most of his work and life was in Krishna district and all India level, towards the end of his life, he settled down in Hyderabad. So he, a, a true Indian in, in many ways. And I think that's what we have to learn, uh, that one has will, one has capacity, and one is willing to sacrifice. You can achieve many things, you can build many institutions. And therefore, I would say that his life is an example which we should all follow, in particular the younger generation.